Hello, how are you, Mr. Bro? I'm, I'm okay. I like your shirt. Oh, thanks. My girlfriend drew it. Hell yeah, dude. I've noticed she's very, a uh, very talented artist. It's a picture of me crawling out of a um, cupboard, kitchen cupboards naked. Uh, uh, why were you doing that? Uh, I was making a video um, making fun of YouTubers. Mm hmm And like the desperate attention mm -hmm. uh whoring i guess and i and i, I just that thought that's how i would though? that's how i conclude well hang on a second i'm gonna address that that's how i concluded the video though is mm -hmm. I, I crawled out of my cupboards naked okay uh -oh. and so when when there's an iconic moment on the channel she likes to commemorate it with a shirt that's nice yeah yeah so okay uh am i attention whoring are you? Uh, I mean, yeah, to some extent, obviously, aren't you filming yourself doing stuff and saying stuff and putting on the internet? I think we all are, kind of. But yeah, I am. You mean, you mean, am, you mean, am I in in particular? Am I? Is that all you're asking? Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I just got distracted by a. Chudlogic anyways. hosted with 463 viewers. Oh my, oh my goodness! Thank you for the raid, Chudlogic. Okay, let me. Um, I, I'm gonna mute alerts, people. So. So don't take it personally. We can review alerts. Shadlatic rated with 345 viewers. Sorry, Jar Jar Binks, Binks speaks to me whenever people do certain things. Oh, I don't. I don't think I'm hearing. I'm not hearing your. Uh, okay. Desktop audio, good. Good. So. Good. Good. Um, I'm gonna mute it. You're gonna have to just tell me one day. Uh, you know, I did my first Twitch stream ever yesterday. How was that? Uh, Destiny rated me, so it was a little overwhelming. Yeah. Wasn't ready for like five thousand people to suddenly appear. I think I think the most at once was like sixteen hundred. But I before that it was like it was like thirty people. So yeah. I didn't I was not prepared for that. Um, but it was good. I think it was really good. People seemed to really like it. Um, mm -hmm. I have found it's it, it was people asking me for advice um, mostly like mm -hmm. life advice. Mm -hmm. uh, and what what kind of questions were they asking you? Um, one guy was talking about his irritable bowder, uh, bowel disorder or disease. Mm -hmm. Um, and I was saying that he like turns it into a joke too much and it, it sounds like he needs like more emotional support with it. Um, somebody else was talking, was asking like why people don't like him. Yeah, you know, like he was talking about how he introduces himself to people in like class and then they like don't want to sit near him or don't want to talk to him. And then, um. I thought he was being extremely forward. I was like, if you, if it, he said he would sit down next to someone like in a college class and be like, Hey, my, like my name's Greg. Like what, what, do, so what are you studying? And mm -hmm. I was like, if somebody did that to me who I'd never met before, I would think they were hitting on me a hundred percent. So you, people are probably misreading your, you know, whatever, just, just stuff like that. And, um, I think it went pretty well. I forgot to enable, uh, like the, the VOD. So is that do people say VOD or VOD? VOD, right? Yeah, VOD, yeah. Okay, okay, nice. Uh, I also don't watch Twitch ever, so yeah. this is all very new to me. Yeah. Um, so, it, yeah, it was erased forever. But one thing I noticed is I need to hide the chat. Why I see, I see what I felt from myself when I'm talking to somebody. I have to hide the chat or else I am like distracted by it. And like mm -hmm. looking back on my debates with um, Bosch and even Destiny. I'm not, I now see that they're hyper aware of the like tone, like where the chat is at, mm -hmm. like the whole time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's kind of crazy. So I think I, um, I'm going to just like make it so I can't see my chat while, while I'm talking to somebody, I think. I think as you get used to it, uh, you know, it doesn't distract you as much. Um, but it, I don't, I think it controls you. I don't think it just distract. In fact, I'm going to go, I'm going to your Twitch channel right now. Mm -hmm. I'm going to, because if you're looking at your chat, I need to see what the hell they're saying to you. Mm -hmm. They're not I think really that's saying fair. anything. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, good. But um, I want to know. Yeah, no problem. Whoa, Tyler, come on now. Um, Fuck you, Mr. Girl. See, they're saying this shit and you know they're saying it, but like. I don't I don't know that that's the tone and so that's informing to some degree that's that's affecting you mm, uh, not really 
they waterboard me on a daily basis, so it's not really a... They, they they treat me pretty much the same way as that. They they call you a nonce. I don't believe that. <laughs> no, they don't call me that. <laughs> they do waterboard me though. Um, it's weird. Nonce is nonce is a weird one. It's like it's said with such conviction. Yeah. When like I think um, like British people don't understand that it has no emotional impact whatsoever here. Yeah. It's like getting called like an apple. Like it doesn't mean anything to me. I, I know what it means, but like it doesn't. Yeah. Um, it has no emotional resonance to a, an American. It just it's like yeah. doesn't mean anything. But it's it's said so with so much weight. Yeah, yeah. Uh, child logic. Why? Um, okay, so um, I guess I just I found your conversation with Destiny super interesting. Um, Especially like Which even uh, both of them, really. I found them both okay. very interesting. Um, okay, cool. Probably like the first thing that I found super interesting was when you were talking. You were talking about like a past relationship where you were where you would like hit somebody. Yeah. Sorry if I'm just jumping right into the meat. Um, very suddenly. Uh, no. But... Let's let's. Yeah. Sure. Let's yeah. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah. So. I thought that was um, I thought that was like super interesting. Um, it's not often that you find people who like kind of admit to that, you know, and like admit hitting, to hitting their ex. Yeah, <laughs> and working on it. Yeah. Um, what was it? How long was that relationship for? If you don't mind me asking. Um, I don't want to go into too much details about my personal yeah. life uh in a conversation that i'm not in control of okay sure so thing. uh or i guess will you tell me why you want to know or is this as a general this interview a general, what are we talking about? i mean i i just found it interesting like uh, i think it's super interesting that you admitted that and then like i kind of wanted to know like when you noticed that it was an issue uh when when you first realized it was an issue and like like what it was like to kind of like in, be introspective about that i guess you know okay so we're not debating you're just curious i'm just curious yeah okay i first uh i think i first noticed uh me wanting to hit a woman was an issue when i was like 18 oh. i remember um getting extremely mad at my girlfriend mm -hmm. and ripping a bunch of soda cans in half for some reason, I had like a bunch of seltzer, like empty seltzer cans next mm -hmm. to my bed mm -hmm. in, in my first uh, room that I rented that like wasn't in my parents' house. And I remember just ripping these, like ripping can after can in half and her just being like horrified, um, which I is, I mean, like, it's not like that bad, but I think that was the first time I was like uh, a bit concerned. And then... Um, there's been other like moments of violence in relationships with exes, just like grabbing or sque like squeezing. Mm -hmm. um, uh, one time I made I made my ex like she slapped me and then I grabbed her hand and like made her slap me repeatedly. Mm. Um, yeah, just like violent outbursts. So it's not it's um, I, I'm pretty aware like. I guess when you mean a problem, um, there's a few problems with having violence in your interpersonal relationships. Mm -hmm. One is that it's bad for you. Mm -hmm. Two is it's bad for your partner. Mm -hmm. And three is it's bad legally. Mm -hmm. When so like bad for your life. Mm -hmm. It's also bad socially because like if you don't have friends you can talk about that with, then it starts to um, like isolate your relationship. Mm -hmm. We are like. A lot of people, if you tell them a story like that, they're like, oh, you're a piece of shit or your boyfriend's a piece of shit or your girlfriend's a piece of shit. And then like they you no longer have their like blessing to be in their relationship. And then it kind of isolates you more, which I think leads to more yeah. tension. And yeah, so it's kind of downward spiral, I guess. Um, but I uh, I'm pretty open with um, my friends about like what's going on in relationships and stuff so that yeah. i didn't have that problem it is embarrassing though yeah yeah 
I, I'm sure. I'm sorry for asking about it. Um, I just think no, it's, no, I know, I don't, I don't, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm okay with talking about things yeah. that embarrass me. I'm not saying like I'm too embarrassed to talk about it. I'm just saying like um, that is one of the problems with, I think, any type of abuse dynamic in a relationship is like yeah. it, it's it's embarrassing. Yeah. yeah, and like that makes it harder to deal with. Yeah, um, I just think it's. Um, I think it's kind of it's refreshing um, to see somebody be honest about it, and I think that there's probably a lot of people that could learn from that, um, just from you talking about that. So I thought that was pretty, you know, pretty interesting that that you. Thank you. Yeah, I was. I'm, that's what I'm hoping for. Like, obviously, like there's a artistic intent where I'm. I'm just like trying to tell an tell a good story, an interesting story, and then there's like a. I think a meta message where I'm like in um, pushing for honesty, but I also really do want it to be a practical like roadmap of like, if you're in a violent relationship and you feel like I, another thing is like, um, man, after uh, I got divorced, I was looking for a therapist and mm -hmm. um, I've, I've now encountered multiple therapists who will say like, if there's any if there's any violence in your relationship, I won't treat you. Wow. Um, including couples therapists too, who are like, if it, if um, my ex and I got kicked out of couples therapy once uh, because we said like we we had pushed each other once or twice sometime like months ago, and they were like, oh, we we won't see you. I think it's like a maybe it's a liability thing, or I don't know. It might be. But it's like it's really hard to get support with that. So mm -hmm. I also wanted to provide some kind of roadmap. Um, not that like it's going to be the same for anybody as it was for me, but just my thought process of how I got from um, hitting my partner to uh, not mm -hmm. and like, uh, like kind of like the psychological, like, um, I don't know, path I had to take to get there. Yeah, definitely. Um, did you, um, I guess, like my next question would be um at at what point in in that relationship did you realize that was something that needed help or uh, and instantly. instantly i mean okay. I, I yeah like seeing yeah. yourself hit a woman i mean like I, I never like punched her in the face or anything like it's not actually that's not true i punched her in the face once but lightly it wasn't it wasn't like a real punch like mm -hmm. The, the, we were never like actually trying to harm each other. It was always like, um, like not even, not even scaring each other, but just like, tr I think trying to, it was more, it was, it was, it wasn't, it wasn't like rage. It was like desperation. It was like begging the other person to like, please, please listen to me or please pay attention to me. It's like, it's like a wounded, sad thing. Not, not like a, um, like how dare you wear that like dress i'm gonna beat you thing like it was it's 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 definitely still controlling but not i guess not coming from the same place mm -hmm. um but still like it obviously it's it's abuse so like watching i mean unless you've like i would say there are probably some cultures or some people who can mutually agree we're gonna hit each other and throw shit and like they can emotionally tolerate it and that's like okay with them i'm not like that though so i'm not gonna say like we it was like um consenting like combat like it wasn't we we not neither of us liked it and we were both freaked out by it mm -hmm. um so yeah i mean like as soon as you see yourself do something that you were taught never to do and that you like grew up hating the like hating men who hit women and then seeing yourself do it um, yeah, I would say I, I immediately knew that it was a problem that I had to fix. It took me a while to figure out how though. Yeah. Wow. Um, so were you eventually able to find somebody like a therapist who could work <laughs> with you or? I'm sorry. I'm seeing that you got to say on guard before you punch your girlfriend in the face <laughs> for liability reasons. Yeah. Um, um, uh, what'd you say that I have to work? I did. I didn't, um, I knew, uh, I knew that I, the the problem is I went into the the pro. 
thinking that my role in a relationship is to take care of the woman and prioritize her above me is what caused me to snap and mm-hmm. scream and and hit and freak out in the first place. Yeah. Yeah. Like that's what caused the like pressure buildup of me not being able to express myself. So I pretty quickly figured out that the um as annoying as it is, I'm sure, to an outsider, like somebody watching this interview and thinking like don't just don't be an abusive like piece of shit. Like it, it's easier to say that, obviously, than it is to do it. So I I I figured out enough to know that the problem was I was not taking care of myself. And I knew that if I took better care of myself or if I set better boundaries or expressed myself more, then um, then I wouldn't feel like so desperate and, and resort to, you know, mm. violence. Yeah. yeah. So, um, e- yeah, I would say that that was like kind of my my self-help plan, which has so far worked pretty well. Yeah, that's good. Thanks. Mm-hmm. Um, so, um, I guess uh, I watched your I watched your consent is complicated video. I thought that was uh, pretty interesting. Yeah, that's a <laughs> that's a weird one. I don't think it's that weird. I think I think you have a very inflammatory way of like kind of approaching <laughs> subjects. I, I feel like that's on purpose, though. So it it is, but also I I want to just say that that video and the cuties review. I made those when I had like maybe 500 or 1,000. Of the cuties, I think I had like 1,500 or 1,700 subs or something. Mm-hmm. And the consent one, I think I had like 800 subs. Mm-hmm. So you, um, I, they're a bit different. And I mean, I, maybe I'll go back and make a video that's that like crazy. I probably will. But mm-hmm. when I made that, it was for a pretty small audience that had become somewhat intimate in their like understanding of me. So Mm -hmm. I I understand it hits you like kind of crazy when you're um, new to my content for sure. Um, And it sounds like it didn't strike you that offensively, but you're just imagining what it would be like to be somebody who's like not uh, like, yeah, I guess it just doesn't understand like, yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So I had somebody in chat asking me um, like earlier, uh, Star, you should ask him about the consent is complicated video. He admits to raping somebody in that. And like, I don't think that's what, <laughs> like, I mean, technically. Right. Yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. My, my point <laughs> yeah. is that like to, if you tell somebody that story, they're not going to say, they're not going to be like, oh my God, I have to call the police right now because you've just <laughs> confessed to a horrible crime. My yeah. point in telling it is like, um, technically, if you go by like consent training, it is rape. And, and by the law, it is rape. Yeah. Like, like, I don't think anybody would get convicted. I don't think anybody would even get charged with rape for doing that. But but technically it is. So I just I just told the story for the purpose of, like, to show that consent is complicated and that the way we define it um, legally has, like, loopholes and confusing aspects and interpersonally and morally. And it's just, it's just like, mm-hmm. um, yeah, just that, that it's messy and that I don't really have a an answer. It's a sort of deconstruction of the idea of, like, you know, maybe you're doing stuff that is rape that you don't realize is, and maybe your stuff you think is rape isn't. And like we just, I just think we have to talk about it more. I think um, so. I think there are plenty of people who are coerced into situations and give consent, but maybe don't really mean it, right? So. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Um, and coercion can be very complicated and subtle and, um, uh, uh, my friend always talks about this clip from Always Sunny, which I've never actually watched, but I've seen this clip where he's talking about the implication. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, right. So mm-hmm. that's that's another like perfect example of like um, you could you could you could rape someone without even knowing that you did it, and without them even knowing that you did it, if. Mm-hmm if they have some unconscious fear that they're going to be trapped somewhere Mm -hmm. or that you're going to leave them somewhere, you might have communicated that without even knowing it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think I've, I've definitely been in situations where, um, where I, I was like a little bit afraid of like being, um, like left, I guess by myself, 
right? Like just from like a safety perspective. Um, like you uh, were you were uh, uh, inebriated, or just uh, it was late, or you were it was in late, a strange place. It was late, and I was in a strange place. Things like that, right? Um, yeah. Yeah, and uh, just so chat knows, I feel like we should probably tell the story that you were talking about. The, I mean, if you don't mind, the Tinder you were you met somebody. Oh, sure, I can tell yeah. a story. I don't know the Twitch. I don't. I'm not familiar with Twitch yeah. uh, community guidelines, so I. I I think don't it'll be them. fine. Yeah, I, ch I just want to make sure chat is not uh, chat. Please don't freak out. The there is like a story <laughs> behind the um, consent. Uh, consent is complicated. I mean, this thing, person so. just told it pretty yeah. succinctly. The rape was him and a girl were about to have sex and she was on top. And right before he entered, she said, I'm not ready. But he saw a look in her eye and took that to mean that she wanted it and entered her anyways. Yeah, that's that's what happened. Uh, yeah. It was a Tinder date. That that is literally what happened. Um, yeah. She said, I'm not ready. But she looked at me like she was. She said, I'm not ready. But and, but it, but like her, her you know, I, I was but I'm, poised but I'm, at the yeah. Yeah, she was literally. I was poised on top at the entrance. Mm -hmm. She was literally on top of me, like, yeah. and we were lined up, and I was already yeah. like partly inside. Yeah. And um, she just said, "I'm not ready," and then just paused and didn't do anything and just and stared at me. Mm -hmm. And so to me, I was like, "Oh, okay, you want me to push you down, even though you said you're not ready." That that was my interpretation of the situation, of yeah. like you you have and like I had just met her that day, mm -hmm. so it is very it's possible that I just made that up. And that's what I wanted to believe. Um, but I took it as like a dare. Um, and that I, that's happened to me with other women too. Not that exact same situation, yeah. but where they, they're like, put them, they'll offer themselves somehow and pause and then just wait for you to like take. And then, and then kind of look at you like you're a pussy if you don't. And, um, you know, I'm trying to get more in touch with my uh, aggressive masculine side. So I did it. And she said she and, uh, met up but, with you after, right? No, but she asked me to hang out again. So we, 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 she expressed interest in wanting to see me again. And um, yeah. I, for other reasons, postponed it kind of too long. And then we just, I think she moved. Or she didn't move. She didn't live there anyway. She was just visiting. Yeah. Um, um, yeah, but based on her reaction, like everything that happened after I pushed her down made me think that I was correct in my assessment of the situation. Yeah. But uh, we never explicitly talked about it. And so um, I don't I don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Well, I mean, I think there are situations where somebody says I'm not ready, but they're waiting for the other person to like make the first move, I guess. Right. Yeah, I also do that. I think yeah. that's another reason um, I interpret it that way. It's like yeah. I can um, become very passive in sexual situations. And uh, uh, yeah, sometimes it's just easier to have somebody else make you do it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so uh, I guess obviously the th – this has to be like the worst for my optics, but like <laughs> – um, but because I was just talking about this last night, um, uh, but um, the the pedophile stuff. I mean, the, so far you you're not you're not distancing yourself from anything I'm saying, which I appreciate. Yeah, no, I mean, um, I, I think that there are valid conversations to have, and valid, you know, I think that there's a uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, that that feeling you're talking about when you're afraid of being left in the, the dark and the cold. And so yeah. you are forced to go into someone's bed who you don't necessarily want to. That's how I feel when I am on a stream with somebody. Yeah. And they're like, so like, let's just be fr let's just chat. Let's just be frank. So like, what do you think about this? And I'm like, I think this. They're like, OK, I'm right there with you. What do you think about this? And I'm like, I think this. And then and then I look and they're gone. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> I see. And they're like, oh, I, I would never say that. That's disgusting. So I'm I'm actually over here with the chat, and now you're you're alone in the dark, Max. And I'm like, oh. And then they're like, not only that, you want to be alone in the dark. That's why you say the stuff you say because you're a troll, and you want to be over there. And I'm not like you, and you're not even like you. I don't believe what you're saying, and like I I have to. I'm kicking you out of the call now. This isn't happening. That never happened. I never want to talk to you again. Um, I feel like it's a similar 
Well, feeling. here's the thing. Like, I think that um, I think while you are inflammatory and, and it's very clear that you're inflammatory on purpose, I think that there are like super valid conversations that you are trying to have with people, right? So, like, c- this idea. But do you of, think like, I'm being inflammatory on purpose right now? No, not right now. No, I don't think so. Okay. But, yeah. Okay. I mean, yeah. Right I don't now, think you're so fine. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I th- yeah, yeah. I think in my in my in my on my own channel. Yeah. And in, in my own like living room, I'm a little more. Um, you know. Yeah. Uh, but but again, like, I I want to make the case that that's actually. L- like yes, it is. It's inflammatory for sure, and it's provocative. Mm-hmm. But to my existing um, audience, it's not so much. Yeah. You know, like once they get to know me a little, they're like, "Oh boy, this is gonna be good." Like they're not like, "Oh." Oh my God, he raped someone! Like they're not like that. They're like, oh, he's he's gonna tell the story, but in like through like a lens that makes me like uncomfortable. I think yes. they get uncomfortable, but they yeah. they're not they're not freaking out. Yeah. So, it it's inflammatory to outsiders for sure, yeah. and that is also semi intentional. Yeah. But, but I also think it's partly a side effect of me just wanting it to be like, um, like, emotionally provocative, to people who already get me. And I, and I feel like I don't want to, I don't, I want to keep challenging myself to like e- express myself in ways that are, that are provocative and meaningful to my existing audience. I don't want it to just be like, oh, once you get that, because I feel like from the outside, it's like, oh, he's just joking. And so once you get that he's joking, then it's just a joke. And then once it's just a joke, it doesn't mean anything, which is why I, I keep explicitly saying like my cuties review is not a joke it's not, i'm not joking yeah there are jokes in it but that's that's well, that's not like truth in every joke too right yeah like, yeah for yeah. sure but like I'm, it's not like my my core audience is like oh he's just joking and saying stuff it that's not that's not why they are not horrified by me they're not horrified by me because they just get they they just know me a little bit more they understand yeah. A more context, I guess, and they, yeah. and I think they also tr- trust me. I think yeah. I, I think my communication style requires a lot of trust. So especially in like a first conversation like this, I'm constantly gauging you to see how much you trust me, mm-hmm. and how much I can trust you, mm-hmm. to see like how safe it is to uh, really bluntly answer the questions you're asking, or if I need to be- get more defensive, like I did with Bosch. Yeah. I understand that. Um, well, for what it's worth, I really um, liked the consent is complicated video. Um, uh, I feel like um, I, I feel like it, it's a certain style where, like, yes, you are trolling to like an extent, but like there, it is serious. Um, so, like, I, I don't know. I feel like I'm like the type of person when I'm like when I'm sometimes when I'm mad at somebody, um, I'll. I'll be joking with them when I'm confronting them, but it's mm. also serious, you know? It's also, like, I, like I'm really fucking mad, <laughs> you know? Um, so it kind of feels like that. There's, like, this, um, this like, uh, you're in, like, both spaces at once, I guess. So, right? Yeah, but I actually, I actually care about it. Yes, yes, I, I get that. Yeah, I get that, yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. so, yeah, yeah, I get what you're saying. Yeah, you're, you're, like there are jokes in it, but you do actually care about it. And I, I think that the consent conversation is um, a really good one because um, I don't think it's that, I don't think consent and I don't think rape is that simple. You know, I don't think it's, it's ever that simple. Um, and I think a lot of the time, especially in the online sphere, people don't really understand what, things like abuse and what things like rape really are, you know? Um, So, yeah, yeah, they're like trying to... Simplify. They they try to simplify and then they try to accuse people of things like that when it's like a purely online interaction, right? Like, 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 call me Carson sending nudes (laughs) to whatever, a 17-year-old when he's 19 or whatever it was. Yeah, yeah. And then, and then he's like a predator. Stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it, it's um, it, and then it just kind of like it feels like it takes the meaning out of those words, really, right? It kind of like 
it, it really hurts people who actually go through that kind of thing. Yeah, because it, it, we can't talk about it. And um, I mean, even if you're if you're the victim, um, like when you get in a fight with someone you're dating, mm -hmm. and like you tell your friend, and your friend's response is like, "Oh, like what a fucking asshole." Like you, it doesn't help you understand what happened any better, and and sometimes it doesn't even feel good because it's just like, oh, it's like okay, yeah. like, and I feel like that's what we're doing um, when we talk about like almost any kind of abuse online, mm -hmm. in at least in these spaces. Um, when we can't get past like abuse is bad or rape is bad, um, it doesn't help us give people whether it's um, rape victims or abuse victims or grooming targets or whatever, it doesn't help them ha develop like a way to navigate those situations and understand what's happening to them and what they could do to avoid it or help it or, or if it's happening. Um, and, the, and the, yeah, like who, who wants to be the 17 year old who was trading nudes with their favorite content creator I, I guess I guess the the person I, I has to turn on the content creator, or maybe maybe somebody else heard about. It. I don't know how the story got out. Mm -hmm. but I'm just saying it does. It's not. It's not doing anybody any favors to simplify the situation that much. Like I I for the record, I don't think content creators at a above a certain threshold of um, power and fame should be. Um, casually trading nudes with fans. Like if you meet a fan and you really want to date them, I, I think that's one thing. But if you're just sort of um, exploiting your position to get free personalized porn sent to you by your followers, I think that is, um, I think the, the power differential makes that a little inherently unethical. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but I don't think that means you're like a groomer. I I I mean, unless the person really is like, you know, I I think if you're like 25 and the person's 15, then yes, that, that's grooming. Yeah. But if it's 19 and 17, then I'm like, no, you're just you're just both like, like young people, like you're both just teenagers. Yeah. Um. So I think the demonization and the pushing it away and simplification, yeah, it, it makes it. Uh, I don't think that's good for victims or potential victims either. Yeah, I don't think it is either. Um, I think uh, especially when you like demonize anyone who is in a situation, I guess that's remotely similar, right? Um, it, it doesn't yeah. it doesn't help people learn how to avoid those situations, I guess, um, and it doesn't really. In a way, like when people say like, oh, I always knew this person was um, was a piece of shit or whatever, right? It, it's in yeah. a way almost like victim blaming, right? Like I always knew this person was a piece of shit and, um, and like we should have seen the signs that he was like a groomer or whatever. Like the, it, in a way it's victim blaming because, well, to me it comes off that way because. Like, like they were supposed to know. They should have known, yeah. Right. Yeah. So and I, and then I, I think also like um if you're if you're looking for the moment when like the rapist says like you know what I'm going to rape you now. This is I'm switching the situation from a normal situation and now yeah. this is rape. That n that moment never happens. Yeah. It R very rarely. I mean with yeah. some people sure, but I would say my guess is 95% of rapes are uh, a slow um erosion of your boundaries and agency that um i think often the victim is somewhat complicit in a, in either you're passively watching or agreeing to have their boundaries eroded and it doesn't mean it's not rape but it it's just if you totally stay away from victim blaming and you say no person has any agency in their in preventing their own rape or abuse then if you are raped and you think 
there's something that you could have done, and often there is, you're going to think that it wasn't rape, or you're going to think that then, okay, then that this wasn't a real rape. But that's because the way we define a real rape is something that almost never happens. Yeah. I mean, it, no, it, it happens a lot, but it doesn't... The, the murkier the, rape happens way, way, way more. Yeah, yeah. In the in the if we look at like percentages, I guess of right. the types of rape, like most people aren't raped by like a complete stranger. So. Yeah, I would say I, w- I would imagine most rapists um, don't know or don't think of themselves as rapists. I think a serial rapist with like a knife, they know that they're a serial rapist. But I would yeah. say, uh, you know like a college party rapist, unless you're roofing people. But I think even then, I Im- I imagine that some people convince themselves, like, I just need to help her, like, loosen up. Like, she wants to have sex. I just need to get her past the, you know, get her to the point where she's going to actually do it, um, which is obviously a completely, completely rape. With that, that That's not murky to me at all. Yeah. But um, I- I'm in the mind of the rapist, I imagine, I don't know. I've never talked to somebody who roofied somebody, so I don't know, but... My, my guess is that they rationalize it somehow. Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, I think so too. Um, and I think even in cases of like where the rape is like violent in some way, right? Even then, like there, I don't know. I feel like I feel like it's more useful for us to like kind of step into where that person was thinking, right? Like what they were thinking when when they were doing it. Um, obviously like yeah. yeah what you're saying is true like it, it things are murky in a, a lot of these and and the the person who committed that doesn't really consider it that right but and, but even if yeah. it's really obvious yeah. like you have so if somebody gets raped in a parking lot you have one person who's thinking i'm i want to go to my car and yeah. then the other person's thinking like who the fuck knows what so i i, I agree it's pretty yeah. important to investigate um the more agency the rapist has in a situation, the more important it is to figure out why they did it, I think. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, uh, sorry. So, so um, uh, I noticed that you talk a lot about, like, the cuties thing and, and like, the, the pedophile kind of thing. Um, I thought that yeah. you're... I, I see that people the scab I can't stop picking it. Uh, yeah, I understand people um, people have been kind of uh, freaking out, as you said, like Bosch uh, kind of didn't really treat you too charitably. <laughs> so no, he freaked freaked out. Yeah, yeah. Um, I guess I I was listening to one of your songs um, and you talked about um, I'm sorry if this is like too personal like, just let me know if you're uncomfortable at all, you know, and I'll just drop it. But like you, okay. you mentioned your um, you mentioned your mom in, in one of your songs. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. And you said that um, you said that she was attracted to you when you were like yeah. 16. Uh, was that uh, definitely when I was 16. I said, yeah, yeah, that's a true story. OK. How did you find out that she – I know she kicked uh, you out, you said, right? Well, first I could just tell. Yeah. Um, but thinking that your own mother is attracted to you is mm-hmm. a pretty confusing experience because – Yeah, especially at 16, yeah. Especially at 16, right. So yeah. um, I, I uh, first you – think you're making it up mm-hmm. which is weird because then you're, you're like why would i make that up yeah but i would ra- you'd rather believe you're making it up than that is true yeah and then um yeah she kicked me out and then when i was 25 we had we had res- I, I stopped speaking to her for a, a while mm-hmm. from when i was like 16 to 18 or around there mm-hmm. when i was 25 I was like, uh, I, I, we, we had like a more polite relationship, but I could see that it was, um, like destroying me psychologically to just be nice because I couldn't 
stand her. I couldn't stand being around her. I couldn't stand being in her presence. I couldn't stand here. I, she, she would like talk to me on the phone mm -hmm. and it would feel like bugs were crawling in my ear. Like I, I would, I would hold, if I thought she was going to be talking for more than 10 seconds or so, I would literally hold the phone away so that I couldn't hear her talking because I just, I felt like I was being poisoned anytime I interacted with her. So finally I, I emailed her and I was like, Hey, listen, I hate you. And, uh, I don't like, I don't know what to tell you, but like you, you really screwed up my life. You kicked me out. I don't think you care about me. I don't think you listen to me. And, um, she was very defensive at first and very made it all about herself. And we went back and forth a couple of times and then, mm -hmm. Uh, ca almost casually, she was like, well, yeah, part of why I kicked you out is that I, I was uh, sexually attracted to you and I was afraid for you. Wow. Yeah. I, I think and that's... I, um... I, 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 have, I have not uh, seen her since. Wow. Um, so did she, did she say anything when she kicked you out or like that was just, that was just it? Um, she kicked me out. I think what spurred that on is I, I said, she would, she would constantly criticize me, uh -huh. um, her and her wife, uh, -huh. uh all the time. Like, and no matter what the fuck I did or said, it was something that somehow was offensive or, uh, um, sexist. Most, mostly my, my teenage angst and, and general anger. And uh, and more specific anger at having a fucking creepy mom. Also, she's like very annoying. It's like it's, creepiness is one problem, but she also like doesn't um, like she she would she wouldn't care if I was telling her a story. Like it, it's a very like dis just dismissive demeanor um, of just feeling like I was never listened to. And when I was, I was criticized. So at some point, um, in in one of these confrontations where I was I was being told I was uh, like bad person somehow, I said. I, uh, you, I just think you don't like me. Mm -hmm. And that let like clicked. And I just kept telling her like every, I, every time we have a fight, I'd be like, li I'd be like, listen, I think you just don't like me. And then, uh, yeah, eventually she was like, I think you should go live with your father. And I said, okay. Yeah. That must've been pretty, uh, jarring that like whole thing is having your whole life kind of if you were living with her. I was already living with him half the time. So yeah. it was jarring, but um, it was really, it really hurt, but it was also very relieving. Yeah. Um, just feeling like, oh, I just don't have to deal with this anymore. Yeah. Okay. Like I, I already knew you, cause like I meant it. I'm like, I already know that you, you don't want like, you don't want the relationship with me that I want with you. Yeah. Like at, at any, anything in any way you, you secretly, privately want a sexual relationship, which I, which I don't want, and then you um, don't want a relationship where we're honest with each other and and where we're like, aff like uh, affectionate in like a like a fucking normal way, and mm -hmm. and and that's what and that's I like I want a mother, and like what you're offering me is like a creepy spider that wants to rape me and is is also really annoying, so yeah. it was sad to admit to myself that like I wasn't gonna get what I needed, but it was also. Um, pretty free yeah. I, yeah I think um I think you know uh that's like another thing I try to like emphasize with people who like audience people or like chat um is that like these things a lot of the time you you won't get a sorry and even if you get a sorry it would never be enough anyways right and there's like no well this is yeah, <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. I did get a sorry yeah but yeah. it was paired with sorry i'm sexually attracted to you yeah and that that to, to me that is a boundary shattering yeah uh way to drive a stake through the heart of your relationship with your child now being sexually attracted to your child on some level i don't think is that weird really mm, yeah i mean it's like a little it's so like a younger person that looks like you, well, for, I mean, if you're sexually attracted to yourself, but also your partner, it's a, it's a thing that looks like the two people that you think are the hottest two people in the world and is like 16 or 18 or whatever. Yeah. So I don't, I don't think that's that weird. I think lot, I think lots of people 
comment on their child's appearance and a strapping young man or when grandma's coming over to pinch your cheeks when you're when you're 16 it feels a different a little different than when you're uh six Mm -hmm. so i and then you know when fathers see their daughters dressed up for prom night and they go oh my god and then they suddenly feel protective and scared and this like Mm -hmm. roller coaster of emotions i suspect one of those emotions is some kind of attraction however in a in a normal or i guess desirable relationship that 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 feeling is just one of a million other feelings mm-hmm. of like p- like parental love and care and um and and restraint mm-hmm. and boundaries and protection and so i think most people i mean i i've definitely seen uh, friends who are not as protected from this and whose parents are a little more explicitly like kind of weird with them mm-hmm. and then i've seen people who are very good at at kind of managing that and um so i i think what i've landed on is that like i don't think finding your teenage child attractive on some level um and i understand in twitch world this is like a really weird thing to say mm-hmm. but in in like where like if you have like get a degree in psychology you'll have conversations like this that are not weird Mm -hmm. um and there so there are arenas where what i'm about to say would not be weird i understand that we're in an arena where it is weird but i'm i as you know i'm gonna say it anyway so i don't think the attraction itself is what was so um wrong with my relationship with my mother i think and 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 then obviously goes the other way too like you have the oedipus complex where you want to you know fuck your mom and kill your dad I, i don't think that's weird either i think what's weird is a lack of of boundaries and structure and an affectionate safe framework where you know just because i have a fleeting thought that i want to kill you or fuck you or tell you a bunch of shit i shouldn't tell you or whatever that doesn't mean i'm going to do that yeah and like i i think you know if if my if i ever have a child and they hear me saying this on stream someday um, my hope is that they they won't feel like they have to wonder if if I'm attracted to them. They'll know that it's not their problem. It do, it doesn't matter, and I think that's where my mother really failed. Is I mean explicitly telling me, but also just not to me. Like once you realize you're attracted to me, like okay, then that's that's your problem. You have to. F- deal with that that's nothing to do with me why the fuck should i hear about it i don't want to know that yeah i don't want to see it i don't want to feel it i don't want to know it i don't want to talk about it i don't want to be talking about it on a stream 10 years later i don't i don't i it's disgusting i don't want it and that's um yeah and so uh i i kind of think the same thing about pedophilia in general like if you're attracted to kids the kids don't need to fucking know that like, you, like, don't tell them. That's, that's not what I'm advocating for. I'm, I'm, I'm more advocating for telling yourself. Like, it, and, and maybe this is part of what went wrong with my mother, is that she could not admit to herself how she was feeling. I think if she could, and if she could have gone to therapy and talked about it with somebody, uh, maybe, maybe she could have saved our relationship. But as, as it was... Um, uh, yeah, all the all the good stuff wasn't there, and I, I was left only with the bad. Yeah, yeah. I mean, in a way, um, I, I don't know. Tell me if this is wrong, but like, I, I think that in a way, you know, there are people who have that, um, but they they don't. I guess they they never act on that or whatever. Um, I think the fact that your mother was willing to violate or not even violate but like break that boundary is kind of a it it kind of feels like your agency as like an equal human being kind of is is um unimportant i guess right yeah yeah it was definitely like um 
and I and I and I I'm sure some people are going to compare me to her uh, and the and the willingness to blurt things out. Um, and maybe that's part of where I got it from. But you're not my fucking children. Like I'm not. <laughs> it's it's yeah. I think it's different. But I. Yeah, it's like. Um, privacy. I just never felt like I had like psychological privacy. Yeah. And I think that's Did you feel unsafe? Yeah, yeah but I didn't recognize it as yeah. that at the time. Like and until I felt safe for the first time ever, uh like in my 30s, I d I didn't realize that I had been scared for most of my life. Yeah, that's So like in retrospect, I see now that I was um horrified by my 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 body and my sexuality and tiptoeing around and and uh i fucking would have done anything to like have my own space and my own place uh but yeah i didn't i, I didn't understand that's what i was feeling for a long time yeah did that affect like it, you were saying like how you felt about your your own body right did that affect that a lot yeah, I mean, I was a pretty big exhibitionist uh -huh. until I still am. No, until uh, until I realized it was coming from a place of feeling like I had no privacy and like sort of um. I think of fetishes. I think a lot of fetishes are like something bad happens to you when you're a kid. That's like a grain of sand, and then you 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 find a way to enjoy it and turn it into a pearl. Mm. Um. But it's still like, like a, having a pearl in your shell is still an uncomfortable thing, and um, so I think I I coped with it kind of in that way of like first hating my body and then b being obsessed with my body and being obsessed with other people liking my body and then realizing that maybe that's this kind of self destructive or maybe there's part of me that um, kind of the same thing like j just because I'm fantasizing about doing something or or being feeling exposed doesn't mean I have to actually do it. And so uh, I used to find situations to sort of scratch the like fetish itch that I um, don't I don't really do that now because I I can feel that it's on some level it's not good for me. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. That makes sense. Um, so uh, yeah, I just I kind of find it sad actually the reason why I was asking this I find it kind of as sad that people you are you have you are having a conversation that I think is really meaningful um and I just find it kind of sad that people are automatically assuming the worst thing right um yeah yeah that and and I, to me it felt like when I was watching you have these conversations it was like, I don't think he is, like, people are calling you pedophile. I don't think he is <laughs> I see they're calling me pedophile yeah. right now. I don't think he is, <laughs> I don't think he's a pedophile. I think that he's coming at this from a place where it is deeply personal and you want well, to. Well, aren't all, I, I'd say a pe all pedophiles are probably coming at it from a place that's deeply okay. personal. Okay, all right, <laughs> sure, right. Right. yeah. Right, like, yeah. the story I just told you, I yeah. imagine most pedophiles have a very similar story to tell yeah, you. Yeah, so I guess I they don't... could, yeah, yeah. But yeah. uh, but I mean, just the the idea that this automatically makes you like um, like a demon or something, you know, um, I think that um, there's there's well, they're not saying this makes me a demon. They're saying me talking about how the blonde girl in cuties was hot. It makes yeah. me a demon. So I, I I don't I don't want to straw man the people yeah. who think I'm a pedophile like there. I understand you've you've got reasons that you think that and that that's okay that you think that yeah i don't okay. think it but you know uh, yeah. it depends on also depends on your definition of pedophile yeah um yeah i i do disagree with your idea of like this um inherent kind of like you were saying that it's not abnormal to be sexually attracted to your child i, I do feel like that is abnormal i uh, but even if it were abnormal there's still like a boundary that you don't break right um i think that you're saying it's abnormal 
with a with the value judgment. It's not it's not uh, um, ideal. Uh-huh. But if I told you, like, if I said, you know what, uh, like, people sexually abusing their own children is pretty common. It's very common. Yeah. Right. So I it, to me what percentage of people do you think sexually abuse their children? Just um, just just spitballing. Without just guessing, just based on your own intuition cuz cuz my argument I'm going to make to you is about your own intuition. I, well, if we look on a global This is scale. a Vosh question. Yeah. No, no, no. Just what do you think? Well, when you ask me that, do you ask me like from a like just within our society, I guess, like America? Or do you mean like... Sure, let's well, do America. Okay. okay. Um, the percentage of people that sexually abuse their children. I think it's yeah. a pretty high percent. I think it's like 15% probably. 10 to okay. 15%. Yeah. Okay. And do you think... I, I, I feel that that sexual abuse has to have some component of being attracted to your own child. Do you agree with that? Not necessarily. No. No Zero component of attraction? Um, I think that there could be part of it that it has an aspect of it but i think what's more important is this um i, I absolutely but yeah. i just i want to focus on attraction because you because you said it's not normal and i want to make the case that if you look at it if i couch it in yeah. terms of it being a bad thing yeah i think you'll be willing to say that actually it is it is common if i couch it in terms of it being a neutral fact then I think that you're going to push me more towards saying, oh, I, I don't think that that's com- I don't think that's true at all. And, and I'm not trying to like catch you here. I just, I just want to show the way I see it. Yeah. So, I think it's part of it, but I think. Okay. I think, so can, yeah. well, can, can, Sorry, can, can ahead, I continue yeah, leading you ahead. down the Vosh, the Vosh uh, steps into the basement of my mind? Okay. So if we say 15%, actually go through with it Mm -hmm. what percentage of people do you think that have a fleeting urge to abuse their child actually do it how successful do you think the average person is in preventing themselves from acting on a urge to abuse their child and potentially destroy their relationship with the child well not potentially definitely and then uh, potentially destroy their entire family and life do you do you think most people who want to do it end up doing it, or do you think that a lot of people are able to? I think a lot of people um, are able to not do it. Okay, so what percentage of people do you think actually go through with it versus who just think about it? Maybe like ten percent again. Okay, so if fifteen percent of people do it, and that's ten percent of people who want to do it. You are suggesting that 150% of people I, harbor wait. some sexual... No, no, no. Let me finish. Uh, this is the most quotable thing I've ever said. Okay. 150% of people are sexually attracted to their own children. And you know what, Stardust? I agree with you. Wait. I think I, I, think I misunderstood your question, though. Um, okay. Let's start over. Okay. So <laughs> if it's like how much percentage of the current population... Are no, no, no. Well, I'm sorry. Let me. I'll, okay, I'll re-ask it. Okay. What percentage of people who fantasize about abusing their children actually end up doing it? So, like, ten, uh, yeah, maybe ten percent. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so you're. This is what I'm saying: is fifteen yeah. percent of all people actually do it, right? That's that's what you said. Uh, no, I'd probably put like 10% again, I think. Yeah, 10%. Okay, so 10% of all people do it. Mm-hmm. So we have this 10% layer, uh, the tip of the iceberg, who actually ended up doing it. And this is, you're saying, is one-tenth of the amount of people who want to do it. And so mm-hmm. what is 10 times 10? Yeah, I, I guess what you're saying. That's everyone. You're, say, you're saying that 100% of people are sexually attracted to their own children uh, I think you're a pedophile and I'm hanging up. No, I'm just kidding. No, please. My, my point, my, 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 no, my point is that you, my point is that you're probably overstating it. Yeah. Um, 
because we're talking about it in terms of it being a bad thing. When I talk about abuse, everybody says, oh, it's incredibly common. Everyone is a rapist or pedophile. If I talk about it in terms of proclivity and a, in a sort of neutral way, and I say, well, what percentage of people do you think would want, a 14 year, want to watch a 14-year-old strip? Then everybody says, well, almost nobody. I think the club with the 14-year-olds would be empty. And like, I think Vosh had the intellectual honesty. I'll give him credit for this, for including 14 in his range. Uh, he didn't have to do that. He could have said, I think 21 would be the most popular age. What, what do you think, Mr. Girl? And then I would say, well, I, don't, I think it's nine. And then, you know, he would trap me. So I appreciate that he gave me the honesty to do that. My point is, I'm not, tr I'm not trying to trick you. I'm yeah. saying that whether people's ability to rationally discuss um, pedophilia is heavily impeded by whether you're framing it as a good thing or a bad thing. And if you frame it as a bad thing, every and if I say, if I had said Vosh, the U.S. is full of disgusting child rapists, wouldn't you say? And he would say, well, absolutely, I think it's a big problem, Mr. Girl. I'd say, okay, given that, how many of these sick, disgusting fuckers do you think there would be in the strip club that has the 15-year-olds the in it? And he would say, all of them. And it would be perfectly socially acceptable to say that. But if I say it like, um, think of your friends, think of your family, think of you and me, think of the people you know, think of the average person walking down the street, uh, which, which club do you think they'd be in? It becomes much harder to give the same answer. Mm -hmm. So, and, and I feel like that's, that's what happened and, and why your answer to... If I say, I think it's somewhat normal to have some component of attraction to your children, you'll make it a point to say, I, I got to stop you. I don't, I don't, I, I, I have to distance myself from that a little bit. Well, but if I say, if I say, how common do you think this extraordinarily horrible problem of attraction to your own children is, you're, you'll say, well, it's very, it's very common. It's a, it's a huge issue. Well, here, here's why I, I, I don't really know that I agree a hundred percent on this is is because I think a lot of people who abuse their children in that way, um, there's like a significant portion who are mentally ill, right? Um, do you think that if you would be, do you think you can sexually abuse your child and not be mentally ill? I guess, I guess that's a good point. I guess you're mentally ill in some sort of way, but. Um, I mean, I've, I think we define mental illness as like desirable behavior in society. And I would say sexually abusing your own child is pretty undesirable. So I'm willing to slap anybody who sexually abuses their child with a mentally ill label. Yeah, but but there's like a, a different I guess I'm, I'm talking about a different level of like of like um, illness. Right there. There's like there's like functional oh, like there's functional like, like they can't hold down a job and shit. Yes. Mm -hmm. Like people who are who are not um, just sexually abusing, but physically abusing people who are neglecting their children, people, you I'm going to still, yeah, I, I agree with yeah. that, but I still think that if someone gets caught sexually abusing their child, mm -hmm. loses their job, goes to jail for a period of time, has to register as a sex offender, uh, I think that we would still consider them mentally ill or, or seriously mentally ill. But yeah. somebody who does it and gets away with it or... People kind of know, but there's no real proof or way to prosecute the crime. Um, then, yeah, I get what you're saying, but I just I just want to point out that like, um, when you sexually abuse a child or your especially your own child, uh, you are risking ruining your entire life so that you can fulfill your sexual compulsion and whether it ends up ruining your entire life or not i would still say that's pretty mentally ill on par to the same level as like not being able to hold down a job but I, if, if you're saying like they also have like hallucinations or yes. delusions yeah 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 that's I get, what i'm I talking what about like people who are like okay. ill to the point where they can't take care of themselves and, and can't like i guess function in a normal way right yes so but um, and that's why I, I kind of like that's why I kind of don't necessarily agree. Also, like we know that a lot of 
obviously there's some component of attraction that's in it but I think like we know that a lot of this type of abuse that happens is about like the power difference right between people I don't I don't buy that really I I know that I know that's the like narrative of like rape isn't about sex it's about power and I don't agree with that I think rape is is I think the main character is the main um, marker of rape is a lack of inhibition. I think everybody wants to rape other people. I don't think that's that that's one that I don't think is weird at all. So like when I when I try to empathize with like child abuse, I, I have more of a sticking point of like everybody on some level wants to like sexually abuse their own kid. Um, like that's it seems true, but it's not it's not as easily accessible for me to think about. But like. I it I mean based on what I see around me, and what I've experienced, it kind of seems true. But like rape for me is very easy to understand. I I understand if you had a pill you can put in someone's drink and it will make them fuck you. Like I get why you'd want to do that. It's like stealing. Like no one sees somebody steal something and says like why would you ever do that? It's like because you then you can get it for free. That's and like rape is almost like a form of stealing. So like I I understand that. I understand murder. Um, I don't think. I don't think wanting to rape people is weird at all. I just think lacking either, I mean, first of all, the self-preservation to understand that if you rape people, um, you, it's possible that men with guns will come and throw you in a jail to be tortured for the rest of your life. Also, you're hurting the other person, so you have to have like a lack of empathy and understanding of that and, and just like a general lack of like a moral compass. Yeah. Um, so I, th I think most criminal abusive behavior and this is why pedophilia is weird because when we hear um when we hear a story about someone like killing their their husband or something mm -hmm. you're like I, yeah okay i see why you'd want to do that i would never do it but i kind of get why you'd want to do that mm -hmm. when you hear about somebody shooting up their school who is being bullied you're like okay sure I, if i've i've been bullied and i can imagine wanting to take revenge on everybody. But then when you hear like the Larry Nasser, the gymnastics, um, US gymnastics doctor, gynecologist, was actually um, sexually abusing all of these teenage girls, most people either openly or privately will not say like, well, yeah, I get why you'd do that. If I had access to a bunch of 15 year old girls, like I get how some part of me would be like, oh, well, I could really take advantage of this situation. That's not a that's not a normal like thing to express, and I don't even know if it's a normal thing to think. Mm. But um, I don't I don't really think it's that different. I think that I don't people do. I, I think it's a lack of inhibition, a lack of empathy and care, a lack of a moral compass, and um, a lack of self preservation. Mm. But. I don't think the urge to commit sex crimes or any other crime, really, I don't think the urge is what is unique about people who commit crimes. I think it's the an inability to stop themselves. I think I agree with you on the empathy and inhibition part. I don't know that I agree on the self-preservation part. When when I say like the you power... You think they, they think they can get away with it? Yeah, they think that they can get away with it. And I think the power differential, when I talk about that, uh, you know, it's obviously like this person doesn't view the other person as w worth of having their own agency, right? And that's kind of like plays into the empathy and inhibition. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I would, I would, I would. Is there any reason not to rape someone other than empathy and inhibition? Uh, can you think of any other categories? Or self-preservation, I, I guess. Mean, you know, okay. Here's a, here's another reason not to sexually abuse a child. I just thought of, I just thought of one more reason. Um, some part of you has to be disgusted by what you're doing, mm -hmm. right? Because it is it is also disgusting. Like sexually abusing, especially your own child, but like even even the gymnastics team. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's disgusting to do that, and I feel like even if you liked it. You must also be revolted by what you're doing because, because, I mean, just look how people, I feel like disgust is the only socially acceptable reaction. So I feel like 
everyone must also be disgusted by that to some extent. And it, clearly, like Larry Nasser's um, a compulsion outweighed his disgust. But I feel like if he were more in touch with like, like what the fuck am I doing, then um, that might, that might have stopped him. I have to think about that. I have to think about that more. Because um, we always picture rapists and criminals as like super gung ho about what they're doing, like child abusers. But like I can, t I mean, like in a story about my own mother being attracted to me, clearly she was on some level revolted by herself. Um, not enough to know, not to fucking tell me, but I, um, right? Like that has to, I, I just think our picture of the gleeful child rapist is a bit oversimplified. Yeah, no, uh, definitely. I, I agree with what you're saying that we oversimplify what a, what a predator looks like. Um, yeah. But I do think that there, I think the, the main I don't know, I, and maybe this is just me, but I feel like I feel like the idea of ever like, you know, just overpowering somebody and 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 like taking their own agency away from them is just like so. Um, it's like so hurtful, I guess, to me that I could never like, you know. Um, it, it, it just feels. I picture you having a temper. A temper? Yeah, I feel like you snap. Uh, Sometimes, maybe. Is that. F You've mentioned the boundaries and the agency thing a couple times, and, and that seems like a really sensitive point for you. But I feel like. I feel like there's a compartmentalized rage part of you that would not care as much about that. Um, I, be I believe that part is like well under control. I'm not saying I think that you are like a I don't think I have. I don't that's... know. Even when I'm, if I were angry with somebody, I don't think I'd ever like violate like that. That No, no, I'm not saying you, I'm, I'm not, yeah, I'm not saying you would do that. I'm yeah. saying, I'm saying if you're trying to understand it to just from having talked to you briefly, mm -hmm. I think anger might be a way for you to connect to the that moment of being like fuck you like I don't care. Maybe uh, I have to think about that. Definitely, it's something to think about. Yeah. Um, yeah, because I guess you don't really think about like uh, how other people feel when you're like yelling at them. I suppose. Um, I think I actually do. Um, I don't. I brought up anger because I, I feel like I'm probably more quick to anger uh -huh. than you. Uh -huh. But I feel like if you snap, I imagine you snap real hard. And so I think I think once something when something's been held in for a long time, I think that's when you when you can really lose yourself in it, which is again, like why I'm, I'm not trying to fucking normalize pedophilia. That's not the point <laughs> no, of what I'm talking not. about. <laughs> the, the, my, my whole point is like, if you, if, if I'm a gynecologist mm -hmm. and someone says, Hey, do you want to, um, do you want to be the gynecologist for the women's gymnastics team? And I already know I am extraordinarily sexually attracted to 15 year old gymnasts. Then I would know to say no. And I, I think that if you, and I think this happens with priests where they're like, well, I would never do that. So I'm, yes, you can trust me to be alone with your children for, you know, hours and have them telling me all their dirty secrets. Nothing will go wrong there. But if, 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 if we normalize knowing the, the disgusting or dark parts of ourselves, then those people will know to either get help or not take those jobs. Like if you're a pedophile, you shouldn't be around children. And my problem is I think a lot of people who are attracted to children or who would take advantage of that situation don't know that about themselves. I agree with that, yeah. I think that definitely not normalizing 
pedophilia itself, but normalizing seeking help for it and maybe normalizing that we see it as like an illness or something like that, right? Well, that's all. We already have that. We already know that part. That part's done. We already know pedophilia is bad and that we mm -hmm. see it as an illness. Mm -hmm. Well, I think some people... It's very, it's very hard to self-identify as having an illness, though. Like... Yeah. I think some people, though, just based on my conversation I had with people last night, um, uh, it, some people just think that they aren't, that they're, they're just like demons in human form or something like that. Um, How many people do you know personally that if they were a pedophile, you think they'd tell you? Like all your friends, um, loved ones, everyone. I think, I think maybe like, like one or two, maybe. Might say something like that. But I also make friends uh, with. Really I think I think my people. answer, <laughs> I think my answer is is. Uh, I think. I think Shaylin would tell me, and I don't. Maybe, maybe two, maybe one, maybe mm -hmm. one. Mm -hmm. It might just be Shaylin. Maybe two. Mm -hmm. Um. Mm -hmm. That's. I feel like that's not good. Uh, yeah. Right, because like I, because like if I like again, I don't have a kid, but if I did, I feel like I should know. Like statistically, one of us knows, or both of us know some pedophiles, right? Like I don't think it's that rare. I think uh, the only studies I've seen are like two, two maybe two percent of men or three percent of men are mm -hmm. are primarily attracted to prepubescent children. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of people like that's like I we, we each probably know that that's like somebody in the chat, right? Like or, or two people in chat like we 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 know pedophiles and we don't know who they are. And um, I don't think the attitude of like, let's round them up and kill them is helping us. But, or 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 just randomly accusing people of being pedophiles. I don't think either, either yeah. of those things are helping us know who they are. I feel like it would be good. I, I, I want to know I want to know who they are yeah yeah um I, I agree with you there I, I don't like the attitude of like we should round them up and kill them all um, because uh, no I it makes you sound like when you say that it makes you sound like you're a pedophile what do you mean to me Oh, when, when somebody you, when says somebody we should says round up all the we pedophiles. Round them up and yeah, yeah, not you. Yeah. No, 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 not you. <laughs> no, you and me, of course, we're not, no, we're not pedophiles. I mean other people. Yeah, when somebody's saying we should kill all of the X, it makes me think they are that thing. Well, I had this conversation again, like, and, and you know, it, let's say it's something that's like, it, it's a disorder, or it's like an illness, right? And it's something that people are, are um, genetically predisposed to or something like that. Um, uh, you know, a lot of people would say like, oh, we should just like kill those people or lock them up. Uh, but if you do it based on that and especially based n not even knowing whether these people have offended or if they're non-offending, even if you want to, to round yeah, them lo up. Locking them up for thinking about stuff. Yeah. And that becomes, that's like you're locking people that's terrifying up. That's, yeah and then it doesn't make sense it's not right. it's not just like the thought crime thing it's like you're locking somebody up for something they can't help they were born with right um we can get them treatment right. for it but it's still like you're locking people or maybe we can just keep them away from kids i mean like they're yeah. I don't, you don't have to put someone in jail to keep them away from being alone with kids. like i don't I, if an if a pedophile is at like the ice cream shop i don't fucking care like that doesn't that doesn't matter mm. I don't care if a pedophile is around my kid. I just don't want a pedophile to be alone with my kid, right? Like, pedophiles can live and function in normal mm -hmm. society. Mm -hmm. Like, I can be attracted. I'm attracted to uh, both men and women, and I can I can go into a restaurant filled with both and not rape any of them. So, like, yeah. I don't think that sexual attraction 
precludes you from being able to like participate in society. It just it just makes it so you can't have certain positions of power and and like like aloneness with kids. Mm-hmm. Um I I was a horny kid. Mm-hmm. Were you? I feel like do you want to talk about this? Sure, we can talk about it. Um Okay. Uh, I was pretty. I was like, a very horny kid. I think I was in some sense, but it was pretty repressed. So, yeah. Okay. I wanted to have sex with my classmates uh-huh. in elementary school. Wait, how old were you? When I first started, uh, like f- fondling and get, getting naked with my male friends like seven or eight. Oh damn you started early <laughs> i got I, yeah i got everybody all i, I got everybody naked uh-huh. um okay so i so okay so i've um as a 10 year old i jacked off a 10 year old Uh, so is that's is that weird? I don't think it's weird. I think that's normal. Okay, yeah. I'll, I'm gonna stop you there. Okay. You don't think it's weird? I don't think it's weird either. So, so at some point in your life, it is normal to be attracted to ten year olds, if you are a ten year old. Like I'm just saying that maybe pedophiles get kind of derailed somewhere along the way, and they don't really move on from that. You know, they don't form. The, I don't know. I have a lot of theories. They're stunted. I have a lot of theories way. about what causes pedophilia. Yeah, like they're stunted, or they're afraid of adults, or they're they're acting out a fantasy where they're the child and they're playing the role of the adult, but it's like because they were abused, they want to relive it. Um, I think a lot of them are stunted. Like Michael Jackson. I think Michael Jackson was a pedophile. Do you? I think so. Yeah. He 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 acts like a pedophile. Like he it was just the way he talks. He, he talks like, like he's one. stuck. Yeah, he 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 talks like I don't know that he talks like a pedophile, but he he talks like he's stuck. Yeah, like he's stunted. Yeah. Okay, if you were looking for a babysitter and someone showed up and they're like, "Hey," wouldn't you be like, you know, never mind? Yeah, I would. I would say no, no, thank you. Yeah. Like I find I find. Uh, from a musical perspective, like he's great, but like I find the way he he interacts with children to be extremely off putting or interacted with children to be very off putting. Yeah. And he he uh, Michael Jackson clearly is like psycholo- was psychologically derailed at some part point in his life, and in many ways did not like develop. So, um, I guess okay. I guess here's how I'm gonna tie it all together. I think pedoph- pedophiles are child abusers. It's not that they have something inside them that the rest of us don't have. It's that they're missing something. Mm -hmm. Things are broken. Things don't work. Things are twisted and gnarled together and don't fit right. And, 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 and then they're behaving in ways that are horrifying and abusive, but it's not because they're possessed by some, thing in their brain that's that's not that you and I don't have I just think it's uh, you get what I'm saying I think I do yeah yeah I think I do that's 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 how I see it yeah is is, do you think maybe like the reason that you think about this well obviously right the reason you think about this so much is because of like like what you've been through or I don't think so um I think that's the reason I um, I didn't think about it a lot until I saw the anti-pedophile kind of like hysteria on the with the witch hunting online. That's that's what made me start thinking about it a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, I think my own experiences have made it so I can't 
um, delude myself into thinking. I, 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 I get, it's like, it's like, I think it just made it more real to me. I think it's just, it makes it harder for me to join in with like, yeah. Oh, there are all demons and monsters. Um, it's, 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 I think a closer, a closer view of it. Mm -hmm. And I think we've all had a close view of it is the thing though. But I think mine's just was made more explicit to me. Yeah. Um, I think it just makes it so that I have to see it as real. And I, and I, and then I feel like, I, obviously I hate my mother, but I, I also understand her. And I think that that understanding um, helps me heal and I think can help us all heal. And I, and I don't think you can understand somebody if you are terrified of people thinking you're like them or if you hate them, or if you're saying you want to shoot them. And I don't think we, I don't think we can protect kids. I think, I think, I mean, yeah, there's a, there's a passion about stopping child abuse that I have that I, I do think comes from, um, having endured that kind of like psychological abuse. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's also very political for me. It's like, I'm scared of the dehumanization and the violence yeah. and the hyper-partisan politics, people hating each other. And the, and the anti-pedophile thing really ties into it. And like I said this on Destiny's stream, that I think that also, especially in online spaces, I think we have a really big problem of creators having access to minors mm -hmm. in private messages that the parents don't know about. The parents are almost totally absent from these conversations about grooming. Like it's just assumed that like, oh, I'm 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 now a like growing popular creator. I have access to your children, and there's nothing you can do about it. Like they can message me, I can message them, I can send them pictures, videos. We can chat together on on a video chat, and there's nothing you can do to stop it. And like, and I think that the anti-pedophile hysteria is like a, a terrified, like lurching counter reaction to be like, well, I, somebody has to be watching this, right? Like why? How, how can I have a video call with a minor anywhere in the world and no one knows about it or can do anything about it? Like, that's fucking insane. And, um, and not just a minor, but a minor who idolizes me. Yeah. That, like, that, the fact that that is true is already totally, like, unacceptable that that is, yeah. that that's a fact. And so I think part of the pedo witch hunting is like a, a, a flailing attempt to curb the abuse that will necessarily arise. Mm -hmm. Like if you told parents in like the 80s, like, hey, we have a new, like if you just went from zero to 100 and you said, hey, um, in, in every child's bedroom, we're going to install a device that lets them have a private video call with anyone on the, in the world, um, and uh, especially people like that they're fans of, people would lose their shit. They'd be like, what the fuck are you talking? Why would yeah. we do that? Yeah. And yet, and yet, for the convenience of whatever, talking to grandma, uh, uh, you know, because the, there's COVID, so we got to have a video call with grandma. So we have to have cameras all over the house, and we have to be able to make video calls, and Discord's convenient, blah, blah, blah. For some reason, we've been lulled into a situation that guarantees sexual abuse, like rampant sexual yeah. abuse of, of minors who want to be abused. Like you, I, I assume that at a certain point you, you're going to have teenagers throwing themselves at you yeah. and all you have to do is not say no. Like that's insane. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, but the counter flailing, pedo jacketing thing is get, it gets in the way of my mission of um, begging people to empathize with each other and understand each other. So I almost think that we've got two problems that are kind of, they're both making it hard to solve the other problem because the pedo jacketing also makes it hard to solve the problem of like, okay, how do we, 
no one wants to come out and say like I think it's a problem that my fans can make video calls to me. Like it makes you look insane. Yeah. And like I already look insane, so I'm fine with saying it. But like a lot of people don't want to lead the charge on that. But I, I, I don't know. I, it's a problem. I I agree with you, and I think the the pedo jacketing thing definitely gets in the way and and kind of like makes everything super mixed up uh, and and probably doesn't really help many people if they are being, uh, you know, um, taken advantage of, right? So, um, yeah. Oh. I've, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I definitely do see what you're talking about, though, the, the witch hunting, and, and it, yeah, it just takes away, I think, from... If, if we have all these, like, call me Carson, you know, uh, incidents, um, right. you know, uh, and then what happens when we actually have, like, um, a creator in their 30s who's, like, preying on kids, right? So, yeah. Right. I'm in my 30s. Well, I just, I just turned 30 as well, so <laughs> it's just, like, yeah. Welcome. Thank you. Welcome to the club. I just thought of a story of um, when I was in high school, mm. I, uh, I, there was a woman who worked in the front of the main office mm. and like, I think for some reason I had to like go to the main office a lot. I think it was like a checking in late thing. I don't remember, mm. but I would like show up late to school all the time. Oh, I think it was maybe like a pass to go to class late. I don't remember, but um, there was this woman who worked in the main office who as just like one of the receptionists and um i was like be very friendly to her and like uh she was attractive she's probably 30 or so and i was 16 and um she would smile at me and like blah blah and like it didn't feel flirtatious it just felt like it felt like i was being flirtatious and she was being nice it's like she was just entertaining me and then one day my friends and I were walking downtown and um, uh, with this like pack of guys and I, I was kind of ahead of the group mm -hmm. and I saw her um, walking to her car and I said hi and it she looked like her heart was like jumped into her throat mm -hmm. like she was fucking terrified and I suddenly realized like I was at first. I was like, "Are you? Are you you're afraid of me? Like, I don't understand." It's, it was like it's like two in the afternoon, and like you know me. Like we've been friendly for like months at this point. Mm -hmm. And then I realized you're terrified of you. You were flirting, and suddenly, without the safety of the like front desk between us, the dynamic. Now you're just talking to a teenager who you've been flirting with for months alone in a parking lot. And you, it's like, I saw it like suddenly hit her of like, I have to get the fuck out of here right now. She like, she looked absolutely horrified by the whole situation. It was, it was super weird. And um, I think it was like one of the first times I realized like, oh, I'm, I'm like old enough and developed enough to the point where adults don't just think I'm cute. Like it's not, um. They they are they're actively self aware of like a sexual tension between us. It was it was really weird. Yeah, yeah. Um. And I, so, so I saw somebody in the comments saying making fun of me for saying like um, you have to say no to children, and that like it's a terrible way to describe abuse if a child's coming onto you and you just let them. But I I I do think that's how a lot of um, abuse happens, where like you. Um, because if you don't think of that, if you don't think of that, if you don't understand, especially as a content creator, like people are going to try to sexualize their conversations with you. Mm -hmm. It's just part of the deal. Yeah. And like if they're minors, you have to stop them. Yeah. Because they, they probably are thinking the same way I thought. They're probably thinking like, well, I'm 15. Like he's not really going to like, you know want to talk to me like and then and they're like oh my god you do want to talk to me but i'm just like a dorky 15 year oh my god like it's it's been, <laughs> you 
I, I, I think you're naive if you think that kids are not going to be horny towards you. Kids, I think that's just like kids are, I think most kids are, maybe it's just some kids, but because some kids are pretty horny and they're going to be weird towards you. So if you I have think... any position of power, you, you got to be ready to, to shut that down. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I think um, in, in non-familial like instances, that's certainly true. Um, especially like, especially with teenagers. Um, like I remember being a teenager and, um, and I feel like all of my crushes were exclusively older men who were like, you know, out of my, out of my limits basically. Um, I, I didn't like boys my age. I, out of, I, out I, of your, out of your, what do you mean out of your limits? You mean like out of their limits? Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Right. Like if I if my first grade teacher had been like, hey, do you want to fuck after class? I would have been like. Yes, I do. I would have had sex with my teachers starting when I was like six or seven. I and I, I, I knew I it. wanted to. Yeah. So I don't think I thought I was about the it. most groomable kid. <laughs> yeah. OK. Sorry. Go when ahead. did you start actually thinking? What, what age at what age do you think that you would have slept with your first teacher? Oh, dude, 12 probably. Okay. Yeah. So it's lucky. It's lucky that that your teacher did not discover this. And or if they did, that they did not like try to do it. Right? Because looking back, you're I assume you're glad that you didn't do that. I never would have made a move on them anyways, but yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, me too. I don't think that I think that uh I mean, even when I started like seriously hooking up with uh, girls, like when I was thirteen, mm -hmm. I, even that felt a little young. That that freaked me out. Hmm. I actually refused to have sex with my girlfriend when I was thirteen, um, because I I uh, she asked me to have sex and I said we're too young. Wow. Which is, was it? Yeah. So, I I mean I wanted to, but I was I was horrified. Yeah. At the same time. Um, but for some reason, when I was younger than that, I didn't have the same. I didn't understand that, like, it, it could be bad. I just knew I wanted to do it when I was, like, much younger than that. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, I think it's uh, within the teacher department, it sounds like we both lucked out with not having uh, predator teachers who would take advantage of that. Yeah, certainly. Um, yeah, I, I mean, yeah, I, I definitely... Yeah, I got lucky with that, but I wouldn't have indicated an interest anyways. Um, it was just something I kind of like kept inside me. But uh, until I started dating, then I would like exclusively aim for older guys. But yeah, um, I was a, I was a little more explicit. I think my I think uh, my teachers knew. Yeah. I think I made it pretty clear what I was interested in. Yeah. yeah. Wait, so what was the biggest age? What, when did you start dating guys? When you were 15, did you date guys who were over 18? I wasn't allowed to date until I was, like, out of high school. Um, so so oh. I, I didn't date. Um, I would have, I, I would have okay. crushes, but, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't date anybody. Um, and then I got to college, and I, yeah, I would exclusively, like, aim for guys much older than me. Um, uh, uh, for a while. I mean, until, like, until in recent years um it, it just doesn't matter to me anymore you know um but do you date guys younger than you um i would consider it maybe like a couple of years you know but not too much you know so yeah okay so when you were 18 how what's the biggest age gap you've ever had um i think i was like 20 and like like looking at like 35 year olds which is like not huge but i guess like the stages of life that we're in are, are pretty different so yeah wait sorry you said 18 and 35 no no, no 20 and 35 probably oh 20 and 35 okay yeah that's a pretty big gap yeah i had some father issues <laughs> so yeah um uh i don't haven't we all 
Yeah. I don't like that when people. I don't like it when any, when a girl is sexual in any way. People are like daddy issues. Like if a girl wa- wants to like show her body, if a girl's twerking, if a girl is horny, I don't think if those a girl are like wrong. what yeah. fucking yeah. Yeah, I don't think those things are wrong. I think me exclusively aiming for guys who were much older and looking for safety, I think that's more of like a thing that I had. You Ex- know. Explicit father issue? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't, I think everyone has father issues. Like all yeah. fathers uh, suck in some way. Like every father is going to disappoint you in some way. Like they're human. Humans yeah. are f- fallible. I, do, I just, I don't like the implication of like, I hate I hate it. I hate it when men say women have father issues I, or fatherless behavior. Like mm-hmm. all you're doing is saying that your father's perfect and great and like like whatever. Fuck your dad. Fuck yeah, you. Exactly. I really don't like that. Yeah. Yeah. Um I can see that. Yeah. Somebody said if I how could I be ready to have sex when I was 6 but not when I was 13? I don't think I was actually ready to have sex when I was 6. Just to be clear. I think yeah. The way a six-year-old thinks they're ready to drive a car, uh, like if if, I, if my parents had said you can drive the car on the highway when I was six, I probably would have done that too. Mm-hmm. By the time I was ten or eleven or twelve, I would have said, you know what? Actually, I don't think this is a good idea. It was more, it was that kind of a thing. Hmm. Yeah. You definitely started earlier than me. Um, that's for sure. Having sex? Yeah, yeah. I think I was like... Uh, Yeah, I had sex first when I was 16. Oh, okay. All right. I had my first oral sex. Oh, first oral sex with a guy. I was 11 or 12. But that wasn't that serious. That was like sort of just experimenting and didn't... It it didn't... uh, We were just messing around a little. It wasn't like an actual like blowjob, but... um, First oral sex with girls and guys, like seriously, yeah, thirteen. Yeah, I definitely. I think I was nineteen. So, yeah. But um, yeah, I I don't know. There's. I I just uh, yeah, it's been an interesting conversation, that's for sure. So, yeah. <laughs> it has pr- yeah. pretty uh, pretty disturbing. And uh, exhausting, I would say. You're exhausted? I exhausted you? Uh, I don't think it's you. I oh. think it's... The subject. Um, yeah. They're, they're all upsetting subjects. Yeah. I mean, we ain't talking about the new Matrix movie. Yeah. Did you see it? Yeah. Yeah. Did you like it? No. Okay. Did you want to talk? Did about you? It? I didn't. Yeah, I want to no. talk about it. <laughs> I don't know. Do you want to go? I don't. Do I. I'm fine with talking or not. It's up to you. Oh no, it's it's um yeah, it's whatever for me. Um, I think I I've run out of questions for you at this point in time. So I mean, I could I'm ask you weird just... questions. Like, if somebody gave you ten million dollars to have sex with a sibling, would you do it? No. No. Would you? Um, no. It's not worth it. Um, ten million dollars is a lot of money, but I feel like that would like super duper like fuck up my relationship. It ain't like it's not like a friend. You can have sex with a friend for ten million dollars and then be like, let's just you know pretend that didn't happen. Yeah. Uh, you can't really do that with a family member. Yeah, you can't. Chat, do you guys have a any questions for Mr. Girl? Oh yeah. Let's open up let's open up the floor to questions. What's my favorite movie? I have a like probably top five lists. Aliens, Terminator, um, Empire Strikes Back, The Graduate. They're asking uh, what, Silence what? of the Lambs. What your thoughts are on almost almost ye? My understanding is that he groomed a fourteen year old, uh-huh. and had possession of child porn. Yeah. So, 
Uh, but I also read, I think he's like 22 or something. I, um, I feel like the, somebody who's 22 who grooms a 14-year-old, to me, they need help more than they need punishment. I think deplatforming and taking away access to the d d Discord servers, as I was talking about earlier, is necessary. He, mm -hmm. he is not allowed to talk to kids alone online anymore. But I don't think he needs to be in jail for that. That just, that just seems like um, sad. I, I'm pretty anti-jail in general, though, so this isn't really specific to him. But it's, it makes me sad to see somebody like... Now that I'm 36 and I see a 22-year-old, I'm like, that. I don't think of a 22-year-old as someone who needs to be thrown in jail. It's just it's just upsetting. Um, so, yeah, he shouldn't, he shouldn't, obviously shouldn't do that. And uh, and they're both horrible crimes, but I feel like there's a way to prevent him from committing them further or and or to help him that doesn't involve punishment. Uh, somebody asks, I think this is a good question, what is Mr. Girl's take on the media's influence on our sexual preferences, and what is his take on regulating the internet for, for children? Um, the age of consent historically in the U.S. has been as low as 11 mm -hmm. in some places. Mm -hmm. And so that seems to be getting higher. So there's like a narrative now of like, oh, people are getting liking kids younger and younger, and everybody wants to lower the age of consent. That if you zoom out a little bit, that doesn't seem true. It seems like the age of consent is has risen or is rising. I also think it's it's um enforced probably more than it used to be. I I don't know this, but I imagine in 1960, if you were 25 and your girlfriend was 15, yeah, I think people would be basically okay with that. I don't I don't think that they took it very seriously. The the power differential then. And I think it, I think people do take it more seriously now. So I don't really buy into that that hysteria. But I, I I'm researching this for a video, and I haven't actually done any research. So I everything I just said I made up. But you asked me my take, and that is what it is. Um, the internet or media affecting our sexual preferences. I'm sure it does. Mm -hmm. I don't really know how it does. Mm -hmm. It probably makes people like. I have the same feelings about like gayness as I do about um, all our urges or sexual attraction. Like I think if you normalize being gay, then more people are going to be more okay with their gay feelings and act on them more. I don't know that you're turning them gay more, maybe unlocking it more. Hmm. Um, and then as far as age goes, um, I don't know. I don't I don't really have a theory on what's happening. I don't I don't know. Oh wait, what is the second part? Oh, regulating the internet for children. Um I think so, yeah. I think that these companies are so big and powerful that they could figure out a way to do this if we made it so they would it would cost them I think they should be fined maybe when they enable child abuse and then they would figure it out something like that um mm -hmm. uh i understand like the purpose of online anonymity to some degree but i also it also causes a lot of problems yeah yeah definitely. so i have mixed feelings yeah i have mixed feelings about that but like i think also just reaching out to parents and, and showing them Mr. Girl can talk to your children <laughs> whenever he wants. You want you want to be the 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 poster child for well poster adult yes. for this. Okay, the, all right. The, the poster groomer and like, what are you gonna do about it, huh? What the fuck are you gonna do about it? The ball's in your court, Dad, yeah. Mom, guys. Yeah, I just feel like. The balls in your court or my balls will be in your court, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's the slogan. We got to yeah. start an organization. Yeah. Keep a your children away. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think about this tweet that I just got? <laughs> uh, there's no need to. Oh, this is a picture. This is my mugshot. I, I know that guy. 
This is my mugshot. I was 22 years old. It, this was actually the day before my uh, 22nd birth or 23rd birthday. Mm -hmm. uh, let's click on it and see what we got. Denver Post. CU student arrested for comments. Uh, I was arrested in a class discussion about the Virginia Tech shooting mm -hmm. when I was 22. Basically for saying the same shit. I, I don't want to go like restart the whole thing, but we should empathize with school shooters. We should figure out why they're shooting people. It's not that hard to understand why they're shooting people. I can understand why they're shooting people. Stop pretending you can't understand why they're shooting people. And uh, yeah, I spent the next day and night in jail for saying that. Mm. Um, let's look at my quotes because angry about all kinds of things from the fluorescent light bulbs to the unpainted walls. I did say I was angry about that. It made him angry enough to kill people. I didn't oh, no. say that. Oh, dude, probably I shouldn't have I did. <laughs> included the fluorescent lights. That's probably what made them think like. It's too specific. <laughs> right? Yeah. Um. Well, I was trapped into saying that. The teacher yeah. said, the teacher voshed me. She said, oh my God, can we coin this? This is when, this is voshing is when, when somebody says something that could be interpreted in a weird way, mm -hmm. and then you ask them a question um, leaning into the weirdness mm -hmm. until, and then if they either have to pussy out or play chicken with you, when obviously I, she, so the teacher said, wait, so are you angry? And I said, well, yeah. And she said, well, what makes you angry? And I said, I don't know. We're in like a shitty basement classroom because it's a women's studies class. So they stick us in a shitty basement. Or, or shitty, like, whatever, repurposed room that's not even a classroom. We have an unfinished wall. We've got fluorescent lights. Mm -hmm. and there's droves of stupid people walking around outside. It's, it's fucking, like, school sucks. Mm -hmm. um, and then, so then the, the, then you keep asking the person, oh, 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 droves of stupid. What do you mean by that exactly? And, and you're the moderator. You can only vosh someone if you're the moderator. And then, mm -hmm. eventually, you keep going and going until you say, you fucking psycho. This conversation's over. I'm cutting your mic. You're going to jail now, bitch. Yeah. That's when, That's how you vosh somebody. Yeah. I got voshed. I'm sorry. Damn. You did get this voshed. keeps happening. Yeah. yeah. I, well, you didn't. I'm <laughs> glad you did, You haven't voshed me. Uh, more than one yet. student said they were afraid. You haven't voshed me yet. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> um, I this think is all the, just a big setup for the biggest <laughs> slam the dunk ever. <laughs> the fluorescent lights really... Um, Really, really drove that one in, I think. That was the... Yeah, that was the biggest mistake That there. was the stake. Yeah. 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 Um, uh, the centipede thing. People right. keep asking me to ask you this human centipede question. You already answered this, but nobody in chat knows that you answered this. So um, if you were in a human centipede oh. and you're in the middle, wh who would you choose, your mom or your dad, to be in front of you? Yeah, I said my mom because she eats less. Yeah. I would just think you'd just choose the smaller of the two because yeah. all other considerations are going to be uh, vanish. And, and I think it's just going to be a, eventually just a volume question. Yeah, yeah. That was before I, I, I knew your history, so I'm sorry about that uh, question. Um, oh, yeah, that's okay. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. You, you, don't, you, don't, you don't have to treat me with uh, kid gloves, so to speak. Yeah, yeah. Um, let's see here. Well, people are saying they agree with you on the fluorescent lights, though. But I, I'm just saying, guys, chat, please don't say that, okay? If you're really pissed off. Well, that's why they freaked out. See, I think the thing is that one a perf important aspect of getting boshed is if you say something that the moderator secretly agrees with or feels, that's when they hit you, hmm. right? And when you say something that resonates, because then the only reason you think it's a creepy thing to say is because you kind of know what I'm talking. You know what it's like to be sitting in the classroom with the like, and you're just like sitting there and you're like, why, why does this light make everything so ugly? Why? Why? Yeah. Why yeah. does everything have to be so ugly? Yeah. Why does it feel like it's dark and light at the same time? Mm -hmm. It's depressing. You know? Yeah. Somebody's asking how you're yeah. handling the recent popularity, both good and bad. Um, <clears throat> my latest development is I've I've purchased a tablet, an Android tablet, so that I can um, 
you use it for porn. No, so I can use it for, I mean, I don't know, maybe. I didn't even think of that. Um, I bought it so that I, when I wake up in the morning, my phone isn't next to me. I need to have a way so that I can't check Twitter. Because mm -hmm. a lot of times I wake up to like drink water or like just like look around mm -hmm. when you know as one does mm -hmm. um and knowing that there might be 500 tweets calling me a rapist is very hard to be near my phone and not look at it but i also want to be able to like play a youtube video or music or whatever so I think I need like a work phone or my like a work device and like a, a personal device and have them be separate and like leave my phone in my office or, or something. I need, I need to regulate the, my relationship with my notifications. Okay. I already have all my notifications turned off by default, but, I, but you can still check. Um, so that's one thing because it just, it's just like a lot of anxiety. Mm -hmm. I feel anxious and... Um, I'm waiting for myself to kind of get used to it too. Cause I got used to my channel was getting like, um, three, like 3000 views every 48 hours mm -hmm. a week ago. And now it's getting 50,000 views. Mm -hmm. I also assume this is like a somewhat of an upswell and then it'll go back down and I'll, I'll probably get more settled in mm -hmm. to a lower, I'm sure it will be a little higher than it was before, but I assume there will be like a new normal. Or maybe I don't know if this is the normal new normal. Then I'll, I assume I'll get used to it eventually. But right now I'm I'm definitely not used to it. Mm -hmm. It feels like there's something I'm supposed to be doing, mm -hmm. uh, like all the time. So that is weird. The uh, after the cuties thing, I actually am really not bothered too much by um, the criticism anymore. That that I was I've been forged in the the fires of cuties. And uh, yeah, if you ever want to get over people saying mean stuff about you, then say. In, in a video that the cuties were hot and then posted on the internet and you'll be you'll yeah. be uh unstoppable mm -hmm. after that yeah yeah and that goes um, for you too stardust you should, you should try it well I, d I did defend it recently on a panel but i i didn't say that they were hot but that that's a different yeah level, that's definitely. fine that's you can work up to it yeah you can work up to it <laughs> Um, somebody is asking what your thoughts are on Loli and other animated porn. Um, <clears throat> I think kind of the same thing I think of all porn. Um, I think you, I think you should know why you're looking at it. Mm -hmm. Um, if you're intensely fixated on simulated images of ch children having sex or sexual images of ch of simulated sexual images of children i think it is it would be responsible of you to figure out why you want to look at that what it's doing for you mm -hmm. and what it's doing to you mm -hmm. and that's not to say you shouldn't do it i just think you should kind of psychologically investigate your motivations for doing that because it might it might be hurting you. Mm -hmm. It might be hurting your ability to have normal relationships with kids. It might be helping your ability to have normal relationships with kids. Maybe you need to blow off the steam so that you can, you know, be a responsible teacher. I don't I don't know. I don't really know how it works. My my suspicion is that nobody knows how it works too well and also that it probably works differently for everybody. Um, it's like video games like when I kill people in a video game is it making me more violent or am I blowing off steam and is it making me less violent is it doing both simultaneously in some complex interaction that like we don't really understand probably this that one but I just think it's a it should be an open dialogue with yourself why am I doing this what does it mean mm -hmm. and um, yeah I don't I don't think that artists or porn makers or wherever they intersect have a moral responsibility to not create it. And I don't think it should be illegal. Mm -hmm. I just think, um, 
we should be thoughtful if we're going to consume it. Mm -hmm. um, uh, also, do you think that we can, like, um, uh, somebody can, if a pedophile can be reformed completely, do you think that? I do, actually. I think that um, seeing myself going from intense, uh, pervasive exhibitionism um, like uh, uh, like 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 a, a fetish taking the steering wheel of your life and just occasionally just taking that wherever it wants taking up hours of time, resources, planning, scheduling, looking for situations, creating situations, um, de like defining you in, in some ways, uh, to going to, 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 going to like um, not having it be that big of a deal. Mm -hmm. I feel like just, just from that experience, I do, I do think that it's possible. I think having seen, like, it was to the extent where a girl from Tinder said, y "You basically are a different sexual orientation. Like, your 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 kinks are so weird that I don't even think of you as straight." Mm -hmm. Um. So yeah, I do think it's possible if if you if you accept my premise that. Pedophilia isn't a weird alien virus taking over your brain or, or something that's like there that shouldn't be and more that it's like a serious miscalibration of how you think of yourself and other people and empathy and stuff then yeah I don't now that's not to say that every, I mean it's a hypothetical like mm -hmm. is there some combination of things that can fix every single pedophile that will be available to them like no i don't think that's true but i think it's it's possible um and worth trying for sure it's, certainly i think it's worth trying and i feel optimistic about about it mm -hmm. uh how did the exhibitionism manifest for you or like if i can ask that if that's okay <laughs> Uh, specifically, um, I was pretty focused on masturbating in front of women. Okay. Uh, very focused on it. Uh, and a lot, a lot of them, uh -huh. a lot of them at a time, uh -huh. a lot of them one at a time. Uh, -huh. uh and You know, if you're okay looking and you tell a lot of people that you like that and you live in a city, a essentially endless string of opportunities to do this will be made available to you. Mm -hmm. uh, now, it takes a little work to generate that string of opportunities. I, I guess it's not, it's not totally passive, but, you know it's something you can basically have as much of as you want or that was my experience yeah um yeah and also uh i used to model at bachelorette parties oh like i i, I used to be a figure model so i would model in art classes including for high school kids hmm. um uh which is also a weird experience hmm. um they're all asian they're all uh mostly chinese hmm. no i model a korean school too yeah asian high school kids uh and uh art students retirees hmm. i think from 16 or 17 to like 80 i was just naked in front of people on a weekly basis we gotta see what the chat is saying here. I feel like this is gonna be funny. Um, let's He's see. farming a mega I, I This is a true story. 
Um, I don't. <laughs> he says things and then lets the air out of the room and suddenly you feel completely alone and scared you're not alone i'm in the room with you it's okay mm -hmm. get your get your pastels and and draw me um yeah i uh and then i would model a bachelorette party so, so here's what they would do they would say they would tell the bride we're going to take a drawing class this was this was like at 6 p.m. So they'd be like, well, before we go out, we're going to take a drawing class. And uh, you're going to learn how to draw a tree, mm -hmm. right? And so then it would be like, I don't know, like 5 to 12 women or something mm -hmm. would... Um... Oh, that's for later. Okay. Yeah. 5 to 12 women would, uh, uh, you know, be in a circle drawing a tree. And then the the a teacher's assistant would come up and get me and i would be totally naked and i would, I would walk out and uh then all everyone except the bride would already know so i'd essentially be flashing this person who has not consented to see me naked which was always weird but i feel like if you like your female friends are taking you to learn how to draw a tree like they kind of know and then yeah i would i would walk out naked and get in the middle of everyone and they'd be in a circle around me and they would drink uh champagne mm -hmm. and uh draw me and flirt with me and then I would like walk around and look at their drawings between sesh posing sessions and uh you know mangle mm -hmm. nude yeah mm -hmm. that was my that was my weekend job for uh did it pay well? like a year or two no that was I, that's why I ended up quitting oh. um they were they're paying me really low but like the thing is like when you desperately see they they know you're an exhibitionist because they're like who like it takes a certain kind of person to be to want to be naked in front of a crowd of like laughing drunk women every Saturday night. Right. Mm -hmm. So they, they already know that. So then they underpay you. But then my sense of like I don't at some point I was like, you know what, I getting financially fucked over on a weekly basis bothers me more than being naked in front of a bunch of women excites me. Mm -hmm. So I, I demanded a raise and then they, uh, paying you with experience. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I demanded a raise and then they, uh, they stopped paying you with exposure. That's good. That's perfect. I'm going to leave it there. Um, what do I think of suicide? Don't. Like, don't That's kill a good, yourself. That is a really good question. Yeah. I don't think you should kill yourself. I think it's selfish. Do you think it should be an option to people? No. no. Not really. I, I, I think it's selfish and also not selfish enough. I think that like a lot of times people kill themselves because they feel trapped. And then sometimes they feel trapped because they think other people won't change or they can't ask other people to change. So I, mm -hmm. I think it's dangerous to make it an option or to... It, advocate for it because um i think there's times where you feel like your back's against the wall and you want to kill yourself but then if you force yourself to sit with it and the reality that you aren't going to or that you can't maybe you'll figure something else out so mm. i don't think you should quit on yourself like that um so Wait, uh, I, what oh sorry are, go ahead what were you saying Oh, you just sent me that message to read. Yeah, well, I mean, I think it's nice. Somebody in the chat said, Mr. Girl, I had some similar experiences to what you mentioned. There was a moment where I became an age where teachers and friends of my mom were, I feel, inappropriate. So thanks for saying that stuff out loud. So, yeah, I think that's a yeah, nice message. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> it um, is a nice message. Thank you for telling us. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I, I think, um, let's see. I, I think that, you know, that that's like the main thing. I think there's like um, something, you know, especially with men, it's much harder to be honest and open about those things. So, yeah, I think it's, uh, there's a lot of value in that, being able to talk about that. So, yeah. Yeah, I think especially when it comes to sex or abuse, um, a lot of men online, I think, hide behind irony, mm -hmm. which is understandable. It's not, I'm not, I don't, hide behind sounds like mean. I guess I just mean um, use irony to make it 
easier to talk about, but it's, then it's less vulnerable. And mm -hmm. um, I feel like kind of taking it more seriously or your feelings about it more seriously is important. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Well, um, I think that I think that's uh, pretty much it for the interview, unless you had anything else you wanted to talk about. Or... I thought we were going to talk about the Matrix. Oh yeah, you, we can talk about that. I haven't seen it, so. I, oh well, yeah. then. Never, never what do you think mind. about the Minions movie? The one on Netflix. Uh, oh, there's a new one. No, there's just the same one. It's one oh, of my more Minions controversial like... takes is that the Minions movie is actually really good. So. Oh, uh, I don't know if I've seen it. Wow. I know I've seen Despicable Me 1 and 2. Mm -hmm. I don't think I've seen the Minions movie. You should probably get on that. Cinematic masterpiece. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah. All right, maybe. Yeah. Uh, do you like pumpkin spice lattes, apparently? Yes. You do? Yes. Oh, okay. I don't drink caffeine, though, hmm. because it makes me crazy. How does but it But I do crazy? like the way it... It makes me think I am having a string of extremely good ideas. Mm -hmm. that I write down and spend all day thinking about. And then the next day I realize they're not good ideas mm -hmm. and that I wasted a day basically being high. <laughs> interesting. That's very interesting. Um, yeah. Yeah. Why does he stare into the camera? Why do you think, chat? <laughs> so I can see your soul. Yeah. You guys should be used to that by now, honestly. I do this thing where, like, if I, if I really want to, like, get people to understand what I'm saying, I'll just, you know, and then. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah. I got to learn how to do that. Yeah. And then. Is that OBS? I got to. Oh, yeah, my God. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, it's OBS. Okay. It's a virtual camera. I got to I got to make a. Uh, soul burn hotkey okay <laughs> yeah yeah uh our eyes are locked mr girl okay this is has he had acid or mushrooms why are you asking that's such a strange question have you had acid or mushrooms no never What, what kind of stuff do you like to stream? Um, uh, I'm I, I'm doing advice and confessions with Mr. Girl. Oh wow, that's cool. Uh, uh yeah. I so I I just had like eight extremely intimate conversations with different men yesterday. Uh, I didn't know I had to enable vods. Oh yeah, I told you this at the beginning. Mm -hmm. So there's clips of them on my Twitch, but uh. Not the VOD, but I'm um, every Sunday from five to seven p.m. I'm going to stream intense conversations with the audience. No, no confessions so far. All advice. Um. But yeah. Okay, I'll be sure That's to check plan. it out. Yeah, certainly. Yeah, guys, please check yeah, out Mister Girl. Please. Um. Oh, and we should we you should put your YouTube link. Um, Mr. Girl Returns, right? That's oh, your... okay. Yeah. Um... Uh, Twitch is Mr. Girl Returns. Yeah. Chat, if yeah, you don't follow him, just... I'm going to show up and do bad things to you. So please go Damn. follow Mr. Wow. Girl Returns. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. I appreciate that. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think that's it. I think I, I, I'm all out of questions, so. Oh, Discord. Should I invite them to my Discord? Sure. Yeah, if you want to. Are you comfortable with that? Yeah, that's fine. Um, 
They wanted to know why you chose the name. This is the last question, okay? I'm going to... Why did you choose the name Mr. Girl Returns? Uh, Mr. Girl is my PlayStation handle. Mm -hmm. That's it. Um, no, it's, that's not it, Stardust. <laughs> okay. I... I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm a feminist. Mm -hmm. I can tell. Despite yeah. not like, yeah, I, mm -hmm. I could tell you could tell. Despite not liking the word and mm -hmm. how it's often used and what feminism has become sometimes. Mm -hmm. It's, uh, you know, I think, you know, gender is a social construct and that we're, we're all kind of in between mm -hmm. with that shit. And, uh, uh, I hate sexism, mm -hmm. especially in gaming. Mm -hmm. So I think there's something satisfying to me. It, it's it's also it's also like a, I think the name implies that like I can't be put in a box, and and so I I want to connote my nonpartisan nature of we're going to turn things on their head, and nothing's going to feel quite right. Nothing's ever going to click or make sense, and mm -hmm. and so in gaming it's fun to. It's fun to beat people and have them be beaten by Mr. Girl. And, yeah. and it's, it's fun to have them call me like transphobic slurs and then beat them. I, yeah. I enjoy that. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah. And then, yeah, that's, that's, that's all. Yeah. That's a pretty good answer. Um, yeah. Thanks. Cool. Well, I'll, I'll let you go then since I've had you for two and a half hours. So thank you for giving me your it's time. It's been a pleasure. Yeah. It was, it of was course. really Thank fun. You for I having had a lot me. of fun. I, I, Thank you for, for joining me. I did too. Yeah. We should do this again sometime. We should. Definitely. Yeah. We can have a very okay. uncomfortable conversation again for, you know, however long. So. And then we got to start that nonprofit where we threaten people's kids and try to scare them into being better parents. <laughs> That's such a good idea. I just, I, it's a genius idea. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Great. Sounds good. Yeah. All right. Have a good right. one. Bye. You too. Bye. Guys, uh, oh, fuck. I forgot that I, uh, my camera. Sorry, just a second chat. Please go follow Mr. Girl. If you don't fucking follow, I'm going to fucking show up and do bad things in Minecraft, obviously. But I hope um, you all were able to understand uh, understand him on a more intimate level. Um, uh, I think, yeah, I think that it's important to like really understand where people are coming from and why they care so much about a subject and why they have maybe unusual, um, views, right? Oh, thanks for watching. Uh, Great combo. Thank you.